here, KRWF 95.9, Radio Free Fargo.org, streaming everywhere on the blue and green marble you hail. We can get in your ear hole with music, talk, the like. It's kind of talking day with Wilson, though. Four o'clock, I get in here. Four twenty, I open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And this Thursday is no different. And the name of what happens at four twenty is pretty indicative of the subject matter here. Talk about cannabis, the benefits of cannabis, cannabis legalization, goofy stories uh, regarding cannabis. Like today, I got uh, I got a story about how worms apparently can get the munchies. We'll talk about that. Uh, we talk political advances in cannabis legalization. Minnesota's making huge gains. We'll talk about that maybe even before 420 because it's so exciting. Stinking Singapore is at it again. They hung another man on Wednesday morning. And I got a lot of kind of details that are just trippy about this whole scenario. And it interests me. Plus, it's it's sad and it's a person, uh, you know, it's a personal interest story. It's a social story that I'm going to cover at 420. But again, this show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy. Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook, blackcottagealchemy.com. 1,600 megs of CBD, locally grown. In fact, in the body butter, there's ying, ling, ylang, colloidal silver, comfrey, a bunch of other stuff. Good stuff for just, you know, it's a topical ointment. You rub it on whatever's clever, as they say. Again, kind of talking to you with Wilson every Thursday. That's what you're strapped into now. 420, we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. Just a little reminder to you business owners, managers, and nonprofit organizations, you considering advertising? Why not learn what ad- underwriting is on a nonprofit community radio station like Radio Free Fargo? To learn more about under- what underwriting is, please contact us at our website, www.radiofreefargo.org, or at our profile on Facebook. Why not let listeners know that you support the community by supporting a community radio station, 95.9. I believe God created cannabis for us to use as we see fit. And I show him props every Sunday at Antioch Church, 417 Main Avenue. 10 o'clock, we do a recovery class for you all that's got a monkey on your back. Or you knock the monkey off your back, but you can you know feel him pulling on your pocket in the back there. It's always the back pocket. Two fingers. Two fingers in it. We, we, we got, you know, we got an alternative. And uh, we got a class. Come through. 11 o'clock. It's worship. I'm not on stick duty this Sunday. So, you know, I might be good enough to talk to you. But anyway, kind of talking to you with Wilson. He's on Instagram, but I'm not on Instagram anymore because I deleted it off my phone. And I'm not doing any social medias. Uh, A little YouTube in here and there. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, after me, Stinky Arts Music Mart. And before me at 10 a.m. was like some country stuff with Travis. I got to get the actual title down because I feel like I'm doing him a disservice by not remembering that. But uh, I think we can get into our first thing of music here. It's free. Fish. 95.9. That's right. Free. Fish. Oh, Billy Breeze. That's some retro stuff there. 1996 for y'all. Man, I forgot how to do that parking lot dance thing but i might have been doing it in the studio the studio it's care double f 95.9 radio free fargo.org streaming wherever you want to be you can listen to us but we push out of fargo north dakota the best independent radio station in my opinion in the world it's almost 60 it may even be 60 out there folks we had a long cold winter am i right and i'm telling you i've tossed my hobo coat in the corner for one more season free of it i've got a nice spring colored coat and i spell spring g-r-e-e-n feel me 420 we open a big fat bag of cannabis news but i'm going to give you up we got so much news to talk about and this singapore hangings got me hung up and there's a lot of like little details that you know i could get lost in and so, and then Minnesota, we got stuff happening there, big stuff. Um, and I, there's, if there's one of you that don't know what I'm going to talk about, you know, then you can wait still. But I mean, I would imagine most people know what happened this week in Minnesota and what's happening tomorrow. So I'm going to get into this stuff. Now, uh, the title here, this is from Valley News Live, Fallout Continues for THC Retailers Amid Ongoing Explosive Northland Vapor Lawsuit. Now, the Northland Vapor Lawsuit... Uh, they started in Moorhead. I've never had problems with them, uh, but and and I don't know that this is necessarily a problem. But when it comes to legalities and you know 
hemming up, you know, hemming up uh, laws, you know, stringing up predicaments, you know, uh, kind of just barring you from producing uh, was these death by gummy bears. They were like apparently like stupid strong and you, you could only have a certain amount of milligrams and these guys had plenty in each death by gummy, which if you're going to take me out, bruh, take me out with a gummy. Feel me? I mean, that's the way I want to go, bro. But I digress. They raided their, you know, warehouse and they found like, I don't know, like way more death by gummies than you have a right to, you know, and it is what it is. But that happened like, I want to say a few months ago. Okay, so this is a follow up article. Uh, apparently, uh, the follow continues for Minnesota CBD and THC stores. As they say customers have become too nervous to shop for cannabinoid products in the light of an ongoing explosive lawsuit. Now, between the Minnesota Board of Pharmacy and Moorhead Northland Vapor. But the thing is, is this isn't about unknowing. I mean, if you read the package, you knew you were going to die from from a bear a gummy bear and you chuckle and you go well that's silly but this is cool because i got you know i didn't have to you know what i mean it's, it's not a horrible thing but and it's not indicative of nerves regarding unknowns i mean you knew it just according to the minnesota board of pharmacy and the, and the law currently as it stands you just you can't you can't do it all right but uh and that's a story we heard just a few months ago like i said and it's still happening the few of us that are doing it the right way, following all the regulations, welcome the inspections. Uh, let's make sure this is right, because when you don't, it's bad for the industry, and they can decide we're not going to do this anymore, said this Mac guy, owner of your CBD store. He says what sets stores like his apart is transparency. Of course, he's going to say that. I mean, why would he not want you to think his is better? So we're going to blow past that guy, and I'm sorry I even brought the guy's name up. There's a store in town, all right? He goes, a lab test for a CBD or THC product shouldn't be one or two pages. It'd be five, six, or seven pages so people can see there's nothing in there that's bad. But again, now who's ever went to a, uh, you know, a oil quick lube place and they pull stuff off your car, they come out and they go, hey, these things need replaced. You're like, get that stuff back on my car, you know? And they're like, well, this has to be, and, and they do, we do an inspection. Well, that's just... That's just to cover themselves. It's like liability. It's like it's like a receipt that protects them, like your cell phone. You know, I got my cell phone back, and it was the same as it was when it went in. I go, yo, dude, this phone still broke. They're like, well, we did the inspection. No, you just printed a sheet out. You you, you hit print on a sheet, and you signed it by one of your techs. You know, because HR or whoever says this covers you in case a guy like me comes back in. So, I mean... Five, six, seven pages. I don't know. You know, I think it's funny, and I didn't realize customers were being so shy about purchasing it based on this Moorhead Northland vapor. Uh, and then he goes, he goes. Him and other shops say the regular customers haven't been deterred. They worry about the long term hit to potential new customers and say and sales. Well, then I mean, you know what? I should have pre read this article. This guy sounds like an idiot. Maybe not. They say they fear the fallout. I think he's just you know nervous on tv but i mean what what was this article even about he says th there, there hasn't been any deterrence and they worry about long term but the article's title says follow continues so i didn't see any fallout happening here sounded like i don't know like a big fat advertisement for that guy should have never mentioned now minnesota this is from star tribune and we'll just give you a taste of this. Again, at 420, I'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news. And we'll talk about this just a little bit more. But Minnesota took a step closer to legalizing cannabis for adults after the House passed the bill Tuesday, finally. If you guys have been listening to me, man, I've been following this thing through all 15 committees or 16 House committees. I'm sorry. All right. So you're wondering, well, what's the vote? I'll tell you, the House approved the measure on a 7159 vote after a long debate that went into Tuesday afternoon. Next up is a vote in the Senate, which is scheduled for tomorrow. So, again, I'm not into politics, and I don't know, like, you know what the spread is. It seems like 7159 is pretty good. I guess I expected it to be, you know, closer, I feel. But, uh, anyway, that's exciting stuff. So, lawmakers, they face a May 22 deadline to finish their work. And uh, so that's coming up, right? So, I'm going to break you guys off some more tunage and when we come back 420 we'll open a big fat bag of cannabis news this is be dope garage mahal 95 point
Nein. Ooh, that was tasty indeed. Be dope. Garage Mahal. That was from 2003, like 20 years ago, which is crazy. But you're listening to Kenneth Talk Indy with Wilson every Thursday, 4 o'clock. I get in here, 420, open a big fat bag of cannabis news, and we are almost there. In fact, we are there right after me, Stinky Arts Music Mart. But first, programming on KRFF LP FM Radio Free Fargo 95.9 has been underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. Flatland Guitar is your full service guitar shop and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, and Paul Reed Smith guitars and other brands. They do guitars on consignment, they take trade ins and have a full service on site repair center. Check out Flatland Guitar in Luthre on Facebook or visit them in person at their location at 41450 25th Street South in Fargo. And apparently their hours aren't included in this new underwriting form. Uh-huh. All right, let's do kind of talking to you with Wilson. Right on the other side of this. Here we go. We'll see you in a second. Hey, it's Phil from Canaheads. Like this episode? Hit that like button. And if you enjoy the show, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on cannabis news local and national. Listen live on 95.9 in the Fargo, North Dakota region from 4 to 5 p.m. on Thursday. For our non-Fargo region friends, you can listen on your favorite podcast platform. Just search Canada Talk ND with Wilson. Now enjoy the show. Okay. Hello. Hello. We're here. It's Wilson. Canada Talk ND 420 a little past. My bad. My bad. Anyway, we're going to talk about... And don't fire me. I shouldn't have said my bad. It's played out. But anyway... We're going to talk about cannabis now, but before I get into the rest of this, Minnesota finally had the House vote to legalize cannabis. You'll have to look up the details of the bill. It's great. You can grow, whatever. Uh, the measure voted 7159, and the Senate votes tomorrow. They got till May 22nd, so we're going to wrap this stuff up. If you're a Minnesota man, baby, you got, you got action coming your way. And, and I mean, if I was a gambler, I just don't know what I'd do. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'd gamble on because I stink at gambling anyway. And as a Christian, I don't think I can. I don't think God wants me wasting my 14 cents that I got in the uh, in my uh, fake savings account. But here we go. Ganjapreneur study worms can get the munchies. What? Worms can get the munchies? Really? We'll have to find out. A recent study found that a nematode worm prefers high-calorie foods while under the influence of cannabis because it said so, okay? Similar to how humans can get the munchies from consuming cannabis. I don't know why you want to know. Maybe it's to plump up your worm for bigger fishing. I, I, you know, I, I don't know why you want a munchied up worm. I, these these stinking nerd li- laboratory scientists need to get a you know get their life together is what they need to do. Start studying other stuff like feeding hemp cakes to cows in Fargo here. But anyway, a study published Thursday that nematode words under the influence prefer high calorie foods. The Sean Lockery at University of Oregon and one of the study's authors told the study it helps us place ourselves in the universe of animals in a new way by reinforcing the commonality between humans with this massive and marvelous brain and a tiny little microscopic worm. What? That sounds like some hippy dippy University of Oregon Institute type stuff right there. For the study, researchers poured a cannabinoid called an anadamide onto about 50 of the nematode worms which were then transferred to a T-shaped maze, and they placed the tasty snack on one side and a low-calorie snack on the other. While the worms usually prefer calorie-dense foods, they ate them at a higher quantity after being exposed to the cannabinoid, and they avoided the low-calorie foods like carrots, I'm sure, (laughs) in follow-up experiments. So you put a tasty, tasty... I mean, I personally like calorie-dense foods. Like, I've got an issue right now with almond butter because I need to gain weight, but I like to eat... And so I have to restrict the calories. So I ended up over-restricting, right? But then I need calories, and I only eat certain foods, right? Almond butter. Over the weekend, I ate two jars, 25 servings, 220 calories a serving. You do the math, I'll tell you, 5,000 calories. I mean, if I wanted to eat that, I mean, eat that in carrots, why did I eat the carrots? It had nothing to do with munchies. Almond butter... And peanut butter is is tastier than a stinking broccoli head. 
I mean, this worm, or whatever. I I have a hard time believing this worm, you know, used a cannabinoid to make him decide to eat the steak instead of the uh, cauliflower. But anyway, Lockery added, because it wasn't like you put two kind. it wasn't like you put like more calories of the same thing on one side, you know. But anyway, the study was scheduled to publish last month, but current biology delayed it until 420. Of course. So, worms can't get the munchies, folks. You heard it here. Kind of talking D with Wilson. Uh, Olympian Tara Davis Woodhall. This is brand new today. High times. Stripped of her title. I think it's a her. I think so. I Yeah, Tara. <laughs> I should listen to what I read, probably. Uh, stripped the title after testing positive for cannabis. The U.S. Anti-Doping Agency announced the suspension. Uh, she was flagged after testing positive. And they announced on 25th that the Olympian long jumper accepted a one-month suspension. Uh, it already the ban already ended last week. The penalty, though, also included the loss of a long jump title she won at indoors nationals shortly before the samples collected on February 17th. So it doesn't really say what her deal was because I'm not even sure. Sports regulators across the globe are constantly updating rules to increase the THC's threshold or drop drug, drug tests for cannabis. So WADA is reconsidering banning cannabis in sports now that perceptions are changing. So we'll see how that goes. But usually there's an excuse for why she broke down and did the horrible drug. You know, but uh, uh, the USADA's original reasoning for banning cannabis wasn't and that cannabis can be performance enhancing. But everybody knows that's that's ridiculous, I guess. You know, I don't know. I mean, because it, I mean, it helps people that have issues. So does that enhance their performance? I guess. So is that cannabis poses a health and safety risk to athletes? But I mean, just it just doesn't show that. Now, here we go. This is from Mary Jane Ganjabernur. Yeah, Mary Jane. Stizzy. It's a it's a company, a pretty big company, and they manufacture and produce uh, pre-rolls, vapes mostly. All right. But they're very well known. And they offered to hire nearly 420 people recently. And I don't know why they stuck at 420. There wasn't 419 or 421. Seems kind of, you know what I mean? Sounds like a worm on munchies. But anyway, the weed company is happy to take the former employees from burgers to blunts and joints. Unforeseen business circumstances caused Burger King to shutter 26 locations in the D. But cannabis brands stepped up to offer new jobs in, in cannabis to the 400 who was working. They'll offer 16 and 16.15 an hour, as well as health, vision, and dental. And I'm assuming they're not going to drug test you. Hey, oh, and I'm not sure if Burger King does, but if you see some of them twitchy, you know, twitchy tweak freaks, they should be. I don't know. I mean, ever seen a guy on fentanyl make your hamburger patty? It ain't pretty. I haven't. I haven't been in a stinking fast food joint since the Lord saved my soul. Which, I mean, it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of close. I mean, maybe a couple of years. But anyway, it's unfortunate the Burger King pulled the rug out from under 430. Oh, now it's 430. These guys can't count. But I want their loss to be Stizzy's gain, says the managing partner, Ryan. We are ready to put all these folks to work. What does that tell you, North Dakota, about, you know, a burgeoning revenue stream? These guys said, hey, and, and man, if we shut down every fast food place and just put them into people cultivating even hemp, our state would be better for it. And we'd be healthier for it, especially them working outside all day. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so that's kind of an interesting story. Uh, the Detroit Free Press article on the potential Burger King hires was intent on getting the news out to these workers and even offered specifications for former hamburger slingers looking to make the career shift to cannabis. So this whole story is based on restorative justice. If you look on the wall, you'll see 270 years of prison time on that wall. The guys and girls who came out of that system. So now they're making a difference, a positive impact difference for our community working with the kids. So they've opened a new location in San Francisco that is co-owned by youth anti-violent activist and founder. And so that's, you know, so they're doing good work. And Burger King, I don't know what kind of work those guys are really doing. But here we come to this horrible story. And just let me mention, again, you listen to Canada Talking D with Wilson on Radio Free Fargo, KRWF, After Me Stinky Arch Music Mart, and Minnesota House voted to legalize cannabis. It's heading to the Senate tomorrow. So you Minnesota people and you people that, oh, I don't know, Wisconsin, North Dakota, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Huh? 
are probably pretty so pretty stoked about it too. But this story's heavy, man. I mean, but Singapore really, I mean, this is crazy stuff to me that, that we are long drop hanging people. Just in general, seems crazy to me. And then, as I mentioned the last time I covered this story, they did it to this other guy. Except this is like fresh. This just happened two days ago, 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. Actually, time of death was 6.20 a.m. And he went in at 6. So they're wondering what's going on with them 20 minutes. You know, that, and so there's a lot of like stuff behind this story. They claim uh, he didn't even have anything on him at the time of apprehension. So we'll get into that. We'll get into that. But again, they do glamour shots with these cats. They, they put you in fine clothing. They put some fun backgrounds on you. They make you smile big. And you know you're getting ready to jump off a building with a rope on your neck. That I've now found out is scientifically decided based on your weight. Because I guess the trick is, and if you got kids here, my bad. And there's the my bad again. Sorry. Sorry. Admonish me, please. I'll take the admonishment. I can feel it. Ouch. That hurts. Okay. I'll see you in the office later. And you're going to admonish me again. But... To keep, you know, to ergonomically adjust it so it doesn't take your head completely off. That, that's what's happening. And for this guy, a kilo of cannabis. They hung him. They're Wednesday. All right. So Singapore officials executed a man Wednesday by hanging who was found guilty of cannabis into the country. Uh, he was executed at dawn. Uh, Tang, Tangaraju Sapia, 46, was executed at dawn on Wednesday, rejecting a growing course of anti-death penalty campaigners to end. Uh, British billionaire Sir Dick Branson, a long opponent of the death penalty, uh, and a group of world leaders called for action what they described as a disturbing case of what may be an innocent man. Uh, Branson wrote a detailed blog post, uh, you know, issuing statements. Uh, if the criminal justice system cannot safeguard and protect those at risk of execution despite credible claims of innocence, the system is broken beyond repair. He goes, this is why this guy doesn't deserve to die. Uh, and I'm going to read this crazy Facebook post here in a second, but it says chicken, rice, nazi, biryani, ice cream, soda. These are the foods that he requested from the Changi prison authorities leading up to his scheduled execution on April 26th. Uh, he was noticeably disgusted by the choice of punishment. Imagine uh, this uh, Graham Parrot. Imagine being hanged by the neck till you're dead because of a bit of dope. This is the fate that awaits this guy, and they were delivered his execution notice that announced he would be hanged after Anzac Day, which is Australia's Memorial Day. Uh, he goes, bizarre that a thoroughly modern country like Singapore with international brands and companies plans to execute uh, this guy over some cannabis. Okay, so... Tanga, we'll call him Tanga because of his name, I can't do it, was sentenced to death on October 9, 2018. So he's been in jail for a while for attempting to traffic more than one kilo. He was originally detained in 2014 for drug consumption and failure to report for a drug test. He was held at Singapore's Changi Prison in the eastern part of the city. Branson argued the system is broken. He contends that in U.S. alone, nearly 190 people have been exonerated and freed from death row since 1976. Uh, Branson also tried to free drug trafficker Dharma Lingam, who was executed by hanging in 2022. So then we got the 19-year-old who was caned in Singapore for graffiti. You know, and uh, drug traffickers are less likely to traffic drugs and reduce the amount of drugs trafficked is their, you know, is their reasoning. Uh, Branson claims this guy was nowhere near the cannabis at the time, and several more details about his arrest are sketchy, to say the least. Uh, Singapore's Ministry of Home Affairs said Branson's remarks are disrespectful. And that's crazy. But now check this out. Uh, this is a post. Now, I think it's like a family member. Um, so anyway, the treats he requested, they uh, haven't been able to find the sweets he asked for. But after nine years, he tasted some of his favorite dishes. He initially told the family he doesn't want to go through the final photo shoot the prison arranged for an execution, but yesterday he gave in because a close family member said it would mean a lot to him to have some recent photos of his beloved boy. The last photo the family have of him is when he was 19 years old. See, so they make you do a photo shoot. So check this out. Death row prisoners who, are get, who get an execution notice in Singapore, and in this guy's case for just a kilo of cannabis, which he didn't have on his person, and they still aren't really sure if he even did it, are given a small amount of money to buy a treat for the others. Okay. To buy a treat for the others on death row in the week leading up to their execution. He used his money to get fish burgers, curry puffs, and soft drinks for the other. 
A ex-death row prisoner who was, re- who was acquitted last year after seven years of incarceration told me how he always felt dreadful eating or drinking anything that a fellow prisoner who was about to be executed got for them. Isn't that, I mean, what, who's deciding this stuff? How to swallow it, knowing that it is a gift from a man who will be hung in a few days. Uh, Pooh is also allowed to use some money from his account to buy music CDs he wants to listen to in his last week. So this is this implies that he didn't have it. They don't get any of this stuff up until this time. And then he's just lavished by the prison with all this stuff. But he told the prison he'd rather have that money given to his family. He shared with his family during yesterday's visit that he's only been eating one meal a day because he's afraid he's putting on weight. Now, check this out. He's gained 10 kgs in the last four months and was apparently told by prison officers to try and shed the weight. Okay, and you're probably wondering why. I'll tell you. They think maybe if he's heavier, it'll take longer for him to go. He joked. And they couldn't tell if he was choking, what's running through his mind. I wonder if he's also thinking about being lighter so, he, so that he won't burden his friends who will carry the body to the cremation ground. Which he, did the friends get to? Anyway, that's the kind of guy he is, they say. But he said the prison took his height and weight the day before. Before asking me what really happens. So Singapore uses the long drop method of hanging, where the prisoner's height and weight is used to determine how much slack the rope needs. The theory is that if the calculations are right, the distance drop should snap his neck but not decapitate him. Again, if there's kids listening, sorry. But anyway, we can't say for sure what exactly happens at Changi Prison, but families and undertakers have wondered if after the drop, the person is left hanging there for the next 20 minutes or so before the doctor on duty checks her pulse and confirms the time of death. This is based on the prison saying the hanging is scheduled for six, but the time of death is around 620. So the families are completely shattered by the sight of their loved one's broken, swollen neck. And I can't believe they get to watch this. Right? This is crazy. So anyway, this is wild. Uh, anyway, he tried to get food. They said it wasn't allowed to him. But Singapore got to get their act together, if you ask me. I uh, I just, this is so crazy. So again, if you guys sadly just showed up, this is about a dude that was hung Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. for a kilo of cannabis that he may or not even have had because nobody really knows. The details are fuzzy. And it's allowed. It, 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 and nobody really says anything. And it just, it's crazy to me. But they almost treat it like sport there. It, it's crazy. They dress them up. They let them have money. They let them have little parties. Crazy. So anyway, for people that, uh, you know, that don't have cannabis legal here, that likes to complain about not being like another state where it's legal, you could be living in Singapore, pal. All right? But you're not. You're living in North Dakota, which just happens to be right next to Minnesota, and I'm sure that doesn't matter at all. In fact, you know, that brings me to this week in weed, Minnesota, House voted in the cannabis measure that could be signed by the governor by may 22nd senate votes tomorrow tell your grandma anyway this is from mj biz daily curate founder the guy who does the k cups he joins executive team of cannabis accessories makers now this is a neat kind of deal when you check this out so curate uh, founder peter and his last name's really crazy peter drag one Dragoni? I mean, it's drag with a one. So I don't know if it's drag one, dragoni, dragone, dragone. I don't know. But he introduced K-Cups to the market in 2004 and has taken a role as equity partner of Convenient Cannabis, the maker of Puffsy Paws. Now, check this out. Now, I guess I don't really consume cannabis in these forms. So I don't really know, you know. But it sounds like if these are already on the market, everybody knows about this. But I don't. The single-serve pods made of recycled glass are preloaded with cannabis and fit most standard bongs and pipes. You just buy it, twist it on your thing, and off you go. Drag One is not an investor. He's just an acting CFO and strategic advisor. And he has this large network of venture capitalists and angel investors. He's coming on as an equity partner and getting us ready for Series A round of financing. Now, the company's looking to raise $1 million on a $10 million valuation. So the pods fit into bong stems and pipes and is ready for use immediately, eliminating the process of grinding, packing flour to smoking device. We mitigate all that. We're selling convenience. I'm basically trying to build this model off a Cure Rig business model, and that really is kind of genius, isn't it? It's kind of genius. Uh, I just want to mention, for those who just tuned in, uh, there was a uh, University of Oregon did a test or uh, did a uh, study on whether or not 
worms can get the munchies and i just want you guys to know because half you guys have been just dying to know this it's probably questions you guys ask at, at the dinner table do worms get the munchies well i can tell you according to that guy yes in fact they do and you're welcome i brought that back up this is from cannabis moment new jersey police officers plan to sue after being fired over cannabis and you're gonna start seeing this a whole lot and it's great it really is great because again and it's funny because i guess you'd call him my son-in-law his i don't know if it's his relative or whatever but he had just turned 18 he got caught with some sort of something that he bought at the gas station in south dakota and now he's looking at a felony charge he bought it legally at a gas station you guys allow to exist and then you give him a charge for something he picked up that was legal in your state so these cops i mean they're just it's it's legal you don't you don't press nobody for anything else lottery tickets anything else that would be considered a sin tax i guess but anyway four new jersey police officers are preparing to sue jersey city after being fired for testing positive for cannabis despite being protected under the state's cannabis legalization law and guidance from the state attorney general uh jersey city officers said they use cannabis purchased from licensed dispensaries while off the job the act that activity should be legally protected as the state constitution prohibits Employers from taking adverse action against workers solely for activity that's been made lawful. But Jersey City officials contend that the department's firearm policy puts them in a unique position to penalize the officers. See, that firearm policy sure is a sneaky little dog, isn't it? Who are required to buy their own guns, meaning that they are individually subjected to federal rules. Well, okay. Peter Paris, which that's my new name. Hi, I'm Peter Paris. Uh, that is Wilson. No, it's Peter Paris. Thank you. I uh, told the Jersey City Times that the city's argument ignores the fact that the state's entire legal cannabis market is illegal in the eyes of the federal government. Well, a touche, but again, the four officers maintain that they purchased it from a regulated retailer and consumed it while off duty. And again, here is the issue. Is it, fa I mean, is it legal or is it not legal? And you can do it here, but you can't do it everywhere. What? So it's time to just back off of this. And I think it's, it's coming. It has to come. And Minnesota, pretty big state. So we'll see how that plays out. And again, I'm just waiting for the devastating news. Like, you don't hear about how cannabis is derailing Kensington Avenue and stinking Pittsburgh. I mean, YouTube up a little Kensington Avenue and watch them flocko heads, <laughs> them flesh-eating, drug-doer, doing fentanyl weirdos. And tell me what we're talking about when it comes to devastation. What's going to be the platform for any presidential candidate coming up? fentanyl coming into our country made by the chinese sent over for the you know the the mexicans to deal with the cartel to do whatever they finish doing they get it like synthesized or whatever however they're doing it and then it's flooding into i mean people are dying all the time for fentanyl literally dying i mean families are getting broke up every minute because of booze excessity excessivity booze excessivity you heard it here but anyway and so there's just there's just there's too much convolution happening i feel between these kind of whatever and and it's easier to believe that it's political instead of bad you know i mean they're all just funny talking points but they never really have any stats behind them meanwhile like i said youtube search kensington avenue and look at those poor people in the throes of extreme drug addiction that are dying that are ignoring their kids needs all that right that's important that's what we need to be fixing you know and let these cops do what they do and then get back on the streets and protect our crops <laughs> anyway kind of talking to you with wilson every thursday i get in here 420 open a big fat bag of cannabis news and i'm just about to wrap this show up but i got this kind of a weird thing mj biz daily experts sound alarm over global spread of dangerous cannabis viroid uh it's a hop latent viroid so i don't know what it means but it's threatening to spiral out of control and cause billions of dollars in industry losses apparently this viroid is a hidden threat and the biggest concern for cannabis and hop growers and, I, and uh, this guy, Ab Singh, says, I think we're not recognizing how big of a crisis it is. I got no idea how big of a crisis it is, to be honest. You know? But anywho, 
The problem is the cannabis industry for the past 20 years at least was based on clones only. So everybody's shipping clones from here to there. You know, willy-nilly clone shipping. Experts warn the viroid is stealthy. It's very small, asymptomatic, and waiting for an opportunity to infect the plant. Infect the plant. Hop latent viroid doesn't outright kill the plant. It just uh, struggles to grow normally and then doesn't have any uh, trichomes. Apparently lower THC and CBD levels, which can drop as much as 40%, that dirty little viroid. But anyway, kind of talking day with Wilson. I might have time to give you one more little tidbit, maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, here we have. Let's see here. I was trying to find this Louisiana thing, but whatever. That's just the way it is. You've been listening to Can of Talk and Deal with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here. Programming on Care Double F, LP FM, Radio Free Fargo, 95.9 FM has been underwritten by Flatland Guitar and Luthery. Flatland Guitar is your full service guitar shop and your exclusive dealer for Yamaha, Taylor, and Paul Reed Smith guitars and other brands. They get, they do guitars on consignment. They take trade-ins. And I don't mean that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I got you gotta I gotta make you listen to this. Programming again is being underwritten by Drummer's Journey. I'm sorry. Drummer's Journey, I already read that one. Drummer's Journey offers percussion instruments, hardware, electronics, accessories, and more. They have full service for drummers, including repair, custom building, and lessons. Drummer's Journey is located at Highway 10 East Small Moorhead. Their hours are Monday through Thursday, eleven to seven. Fridays and Saturdays, eleven to five. Sundays, noon to five. For more info, check drummersjourney.com. They have a profile on Facebook. Let's get you into some tunes. And then I'll tuck you guys in, and then I'll get out of here. Here's Earthquake, Robert Whaler, 95.9. There you have it. Robert Walter, Earthquake, Care Double F, 95.9, RadioFreeFargo.org, streaming everywhere in this literal world. Even the Ukraine? Yep, even the Ukraine. I got 2.6 listeners there. I got no idea. Kind of talking to you with Wilson. Every Thursday I get in here. I'm on my way out the door. We got Stinky Arts Music Mart right after me. And then a fun evening of Fred, spelled with a P, the AI robot that's spinning the wax, turning the, turning the signal. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. I can do it. This show is brought to you by Black Cottage Alchemy, blackcottagealchemy.com, Black Cottage Alchemy on Facebook, Body Butter, 1,200 megs of CBD, Rub it all over yourself. It'll do whatever. I'm, I got like this tiny little hard spot on my elbow. I've been putting it to it. So thank you, Black Cottage Alchemy, for sponsoring this show. If you're in the position to do advertising in the form of underwriting, get a hold of us, RadioFreeFargo.org. We'd love to uh, project your image. Is that Maybe I'm making that. Maybe that's wrong, too. But there is some projection that we'd like to do for you. So I get a hold of us. Again, Stinky Arts Music Mart right after me. And I just said, if you got a monkey on your back or you've thrown the monkey off your back, but he's trying to get back up on you, we do a recovery class, Antioch Church, every Sunday, 10 a.m. It kind of, you know, it, it's, it's similar to AA, except we use the Holy Ghost for the power instead of yourself, you know. Anyhow, I digress. I will... uh probably let you go now because i got stuff to do i work in an area that's got a uh, a music venue in it and uh they got people uh getting in there quick so i need to get in and do my cleaning thing all right but anyway in review university of oregon found out that worms just in fact do get munchies and that's that's a detail that i don't know how i could have went this day without knowing and so i'm glad i can share that with you minnesota the House voted 7159 for cannabis legalization. Tomorrow the Senate votes. That's exciting. Singapore hung another man Wednesday morning for a kilo of cannabis that he didn't even have on his possession. That's crazy. What a crazy story that is. New Jersey cops are suing for getting in trouble for consuming something that's legal in their state, which I can never figure out. But anyway, educate yourselves. On the benefits of cannabis, so you can educate others on said benefits. I'll be back in here Thursday, I'm sure, four o'clock. Till then, Stinky Arts Music Mart, Gary Double F, ninety five point nine. David Allen, Judgment Day, peace. <laughs>